Hey guys, it has been many years since I've made a Bitcoin video, and that's because I exited the space after the Bitcoin network was taken over by a bunch of developers who did not agree with the original uh, vision for Bitcoin. If you want to read about the original vision for Bitcoin, uh, you can go to bitcoin.com slash bitcoin.pdf, bitcoin.com slash bitcoin.pdf. Um, and that'll tell you that the original vision was to create the world's first global peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. Uh, and the reason that this was such an amazing, amazing invention was because we have never been able to have peer-to-peer -peer cash before without having a counterparty, a third party in the middle, a middleman, um, someone that you had to trust to get the money from point A to point B, um, you know, digitally, right? You have to have a bank that, may, that sits in the middle and makes sure that you have money in your account and then they give it to the other person. So this revolutionary invention, Bitcoin, um, removed the middleman. And by removing the middleman, it also removed a whole bunch of other things that got in the way of currency transactions, stuff like high transaction fees, fraud, delays, um, waiting to open accounts and getting them approved, and you know tons of other things. Well, some developers took over Bitcoin and they had a different vision for it, and they intentionally uh, crippled the Bitcoin network. Luckily, in 2017, Bitcoin Cash was created. Now, Bitcoin Cash actually um, go, uh, is the original chain of Bitcoin. Sorry, my, my screen keeps sleeping here. Let me see if I can stop that. Okay. Wait, why is this? Okay, now my screen is not sleeping. Okay, there we go. Um, so, um, Bitcoin Cash, the Bitcoin Cash network, actually continues on the original Bitcoin chain. It goes all the way back to the very first Bitcoin transaction. It goes all the way back to the Genesis block. And it has all the signatures still intact in the chain. The What people are now calling Bitcoin doesn't even have the signatures um, as part of the transactions anymore. It's a whole, it's a whole other story. So Bitcoin Cash actually is the original chain and it actually is the original vision and the original goal and intention behind Bitcoin. So very briefly, I just wanted to give an analogy that I just came up with today um, about what is the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash because you know a lot of my friends know that I'm into the Bitcoin industry and they always ask me that. They say, what is the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash? And I was trying to come up with a way to describe it to them. And um, I came up with this analogy. And like all analogies, this is not a perfect analogy, okay? But it's close enough. I think it's pretty damn good of an analogy. So what I would like you to think about for a moment is a telephone network. Now, the power of a telephone network is its network effect, right? You need to know that everybody in the world is on that same telephone network, and you can pick up the phone and call them. And the more people that get on that network, the more powerful that network becomes because it's a network effect. Now, that's essentially what Bitcoin Cash is aiming for. It's aiming for a telephone network where everybody can pick up the phone, make a phone call for essentially free, call anyone they want in the world, whenever you want, any time of the day, and maybe you get charged one-tenth of a cent right, for that, for that phone call. But you know that that network is reliable, it's always available to you, you could pick up the phone, call anybody in the entire world, talk with them as long as you want, any time of the day, and it's essentially free, it's reliable, and nobody can stop you from making that phone call. So that is the Bitcoin Cash telephone network.
if you were to think of it as a telephone network. So what has happened to the Bitcoin network? Now I'd like to point out that the Bitcoin network originally started off with that vision. That was the original goal of the Bitcoin network. Um, that goal has now shifted over to Bitcoin Cash. So let's talk about what does the Bitcoin telephone network look like? Well, the Bitcoin telephone network only allows approximately 300,000 people per day to make a phone call on this network. That's right. I may be slightly off with that number. It might be 350,000 or 400,000 or 200,000. I don't actually know the exact number, but the point is, is that there is a limit. Think about the entire world. There's seven something billion people on the planet. Again, I don't have the exact numbers, but the point is, is that think about a telephone network where only 300,000 people per day can make a telephone call on this network. Well, right off the bat, you can see that this is not gonna be a worldwide success, right? It's not gonna be a global success. And it would be bad enough if the problems stop there. But now, let's go on to the other problems that the Bitcoin telephone network has. Not only can only 300,000 people per day make a phone call on this network, but if you are over that 300,000 people, right? You've got to wait in line. You've got to get in the queue and wait your turn to make a phone call. So the thing about this line though, is that you don't know how long you're going to be waiting in this line to make a phone call. So, and why do I say that? Because the length of time that you need to wait in line to make a phone call behind those 300,000 people depends on how much you are willing to pay for that phone call. So that Bitcoin Cash telephone network that I was talking about a little bit earlier, anyone can make a phone call whenever they want, and it's like one-tenth of a cent or two-tenths of a cent to make a phone call on it, right? This Bitcoin telephone network, on the other hand, you have to start aggressively bidding against all the other people that are waiting in line to make a phone call to try to cut in front of people in line to get to the front of the line. Because let's say you have a really important phone call that you want to make. And there's like, you know, 100,000 people ahead of you in line. Well, you know, let's say that, that it started off that the fee was only $1, right, for you to make a phone call. So you get in line, you're almost ready to make that phone call, right? There's like a phone booth ahead of you, you're waiting in line. And you paid a dollar, you're waiting in line, you're at the front of the line, but all of a sudden, someone behind you had a really urgent phone call, right? You thought your phone call was urgent, theirs is even more urgent. So they pay $2, and they skip in front of you, they cut in front of you in line. And someone else is like, whoa, 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 I need to make a phone call next. They pay $5, they jump in front of you. Then all of a sudden, all these people jump in front of you, you are now at the back of the line, and you, because you only wanted to pay a dollar for your phone call. If you want to get to the front of the line, it may be as high as $100 for you to jump to the front of the line to make that phone call. I'd also like to point out that those people who are not in line, those 300,000 people who are allowed to make their phone calls, they also pay fees as well, very high fees. Um, so the point is, is that this line keeps growing and growing and growing, and the fees keep shifting up and down and up and down unpredictably, and you never know from one moment to the next how much you have to pay to cut the line, to get up to the front to make your phone call. Gets even worse. Gets even worse than that, if you can believe that. If the line, if the queue gets too long, and you've been waiting there maybe for like four days, five days, maybe a week, the line actually gets cleared out. They're like, nope, sorry, sorry, we've got to reset the line. And poof, you just completely lost your place in line and the whole thing starts all over again. That's when the mempool gets too full. Sometimes it just needs to just clear itself out, and all of a sudden the whole process starts all over again. Well, you're not gonna believe it. It gets even worse than that. There's this thing on the Bitcoin network called RBF. It stands for Replace by Key. This actually doesn't 
hurt you, but it enables you to hurt the people who are running the telephone network. With RBF replaced by fee, guess what? You can actually make a phone call, right? And then, and let's say it costs you like $10 or whatever to make a phone call, right? You can, right, and so you give it, this is, again, this is an analogy, so this is not a perfect analogy, but just bear with me here for a moment. Let's say there's a guy standing at the front of the toll booth, I mean the phone booth. <laughs> it is a toll booth on the Bitcoin network. So there's a guy standing there at the phone booth, right? And, um, and you pay him the $10, right? Because that's your fee to make your phone call, right? You go in to the phone booth, you sneak in. You don't sneak in because you pay, right? You scurry in, pick up the phone, you make your phone call, and then on the way out, you pickpocket him and get your $10 back. You just stole from that guy. You used his service. Or you bought a product in the real world on the Bitcoin network. You are allowed to pickpocket, take your money back. Now, yes, most people are honest people. You know, like what? Like probably 90% of people are honest, maybe more, maybe 95%. Maybe even more, maybe 99%. I don't know how many people are honest. Most people are honest, right? But the thing is, there's a small percentage of people that are dishonest. And they can take advantage of this RBF thing to pickpocket the person that you paid after you already received the product or service. So, gets even worse than that. How can it possibly get worse than this? How can the Bitcoin network get even worse than this? Well, believe it or not, it's true. It gets worse because the whole reason that this Bitcoin network was crippled to begin with is because there were a whole bunch of businessmen who were very, very upset that they weren't the ones that owned those phone booths. They were, the, they were very upset that they weren't the people standing there in front of the phone booth saying, pay me to make your phone call, pay me to make your phone call. So they decided, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to create a separate telephone network that people have to pay for. And the cool thing about this telephone network is it's going to be quick, it's going to be free, or not free, it's definitely not free. Uh, it's going to be quick. It's going to be less expensive than the other network. And we're going to help people get through this line quicker. So what they did is they yelled out to all the people standing in line, hey, you guys, come over here to our telephone network. And they took money from all the people standing in line. And they said, okay, tell me what you want your, uh, tell me what you want your phone call to say and who you're going to say it to. Okay, you want to call your mom. Okay, you want to say, happy Valentine's Day. I love you, Mom. Okay, hope you and Dad are doing well. Okay, trust me. Give me your money. It's less than the $10. It's only going to be 50 cents for me. But trust me, I'm going to deliver this phone call for you. I'm going to deliver this phone call to you. It's an IOU. I owe you this phone call. Don't worry. When the line clears later, I'm going to deliver this phone call to you. Let me put it in there. So this network, which they claim to be lightning fast, is really just a big centralized IOU banking network. You actually have to go back to trusting a middleman again, all over again. Those middlemen can screw you. Those middlemen can take your money. They can destroy your phone call. They can do whatever they want. And here's the other thing, there's other, there's other technical issues as well, like you have to have a certain amount of liquidity in order to make the phone calls to begin with. It's so incredibly complex because the network does not work. But the funny thing is, though, is that it takes us right back to the original problem that Bitcoin was trying to solve, which was cutting out the middleman all together. So it went full circle. Again, the Bitcoin BTC network is now a centralized, middleman, IOU, trust-filled, complicated, complex, expensive, unreliable, and slow network that has absolutely no chance of scaling for the future or working or even bringing any sort of innovations to the world.
Bitcoin Cash is the original vision of Bitcoin. It has all the original strengths of what Bitcoin was designed to be. The Bitcoin BTC network is the equivalent of Blockbuster Video. It's the past. It can't scale. It doesn't grow for the future. It doesn't work for users. The Bitcoin Cash network is like Netflix. The Bitcoin network is like Kodak Film. The Bitcoin Cash network is like a digital phone on your that takes camp photos right in your pocket. The Bitcoin BTC network is like MySpace. The Bitcoin Cash network is like Instagram. I'm trying to come up with some other analogies, but I think I've done a pretty good job. Now you know the difference between Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. All right, have a great day. Bye-bye.